As a new Christian, I didn't realize what it meant when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I didn't really fully grasp the sacrifice and the pain that he was going to have to go through in order to be lifted up. And if we want to fight the gravity of sin and that downward pull, we're going to have to make some sacrifices. That's the way the Christian life works. It's better than the world's way, but it's not easier than the world's way when you're trying to make a change. After you've made the change, it actually is easier because you already know who you serve and what you believe. But in that process of growing and maturing, gravity is, is the default state that we, were bought, that we were born into, right? So in order to be godly, we have to be intentional. We have to be transformed into the image of God with ever-increasing glory, right? And that's a beautiful process that we have. But if you also, um, again, a couple years ago, the Lord showed me another thing about this, about Jesus saying, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw. That's John 12, 32, by the way. Um, when Adam and Eve were here in the garden, remember, that's the perfect uh, element that they had was that Garden of Eden, no sin, no shame. They were naked and not ashamed. That's a picture of what we're going to have when Jesus comes back for his final return. But in the meantime, we're in this contending season of the kingdom of God in the earth. But you have to choose to live in that domain. That was last week. Remember the king's domain. What's your website? www. Seek first the kingdom of God. <laughs> right? Not turn to the ways of the world. Renewed mind. All the different disciplines that he gives us to say it's available to you. You have to absorb it. You have to metabolize it and make it part of a second nature. Your first nature that was born had sin, but I want to give you a second nature. That's the rebirth and why you're born a second time. First in the water, which I believe is your mother's womb, the, your birth in the natural in your mother's womb, but then in the spirit to try to understand the things of God. So so many times in the word where you see the act of picking that fruit off that tree was a downward motion, right? So... Jesus says, I'm going to reverse that curse, and they're going to lift me up on a tree. And they're going to pin me back up to a tree to reverse the curse of all that sin that happened from that one thing of one person pulling it down. When she pulled it down, it opened up a portal to hell in the earth. And he said, oh, you won't die, the devil said to, to Eve. And she didn't die when she picked it, but she brought death into the earth. And it was a portal of hell that was opened up, right? When Jesus rose, that reversed as well. Because now the veil tore in two. So it didn't close, completely close the portal of hell, but it opened a veil and a way to get into the access of heaven. But you have to avail yourself of that, right? Because we're all still tempted as Christians. And then the, uh, let's see. I just, I just like to think of the, of the prophecy that I do not have to give myself over to the, the sin that, that wants to take me down because I have that force of lift on the inside of me. Not by my might, not by my power, but by the Spirit of God that's living inside of me. So why wouldn't we want to cultivate the relationship with Holy Spirit to make sure that we're clearly hearing His voice? There's no reason not to. And, and the other thing I've taught on a few different times but just keeps coming back is one of the keys of the kingdom. And, and how you might be able to think about this, if you want to turn there, it's in Luke chapter 11. Um, and it's just a, a, a beautiful analogy for us that Jesus gave. If you remember, as you're looking it up, I could just set it up for you. Jesus cast out a devil out of somebody and then he was being accused of being full of the devil. Remember that? And he said, well, that doesn't even make any sense. Right? A house divided can't stand. Why would Satan cast himself out of somebody? Right? So this, when we get to verse 21, he says, If I cast out demons, I believe, with the finger of God, right? Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So how many of you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you? Yeah. Say yes, please. You'll, you'll work with me. I appreciate that. I try to ask you easy questions. I'm not setting you up. All right, if the kingdom of God has come upon me, then I have a countervailing force to the gravity, the, the sin that wants to pull me down because I have the law of lift living on the inside of me, right? I can, I can overwhelm that force of sin with the greater law of lift. I can be lifted out of that mess. 
And then it says, verse 21, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his goods are at peace. Okay, picture the devil holding you down in some form of addiction or some form of destructive behavior pattern. Could be anorexia, could be a lot of different ways that he holds people back in depression or hopelessness. And there's a million different things it could be, drug addiction. And, and, the, and the devil's just at peace because he's got that. He's that strong man that's holding that person down. And if all you thought was going to be another program was going to get you out of there, then you're, you're missing out on the power of the living God, right? Because verse 21 says, but when a stronger than he... When a stronger than the strong man comes upon him, what does he do? He overcomes him. He overwhelms him. He takes from him all his armor in which he trusted, and he divides the spoils. That's a really good news, isn't it? That's a really good piece of good news. And no matter what the destructive behavior is, God's power is greater. Doesn't matter how much gravity is pulling you down, the power of lift is greater. To so override that. And then he said, he who's not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. That's really sobering. Because it says, in my translation of how I understand this, there's no neutral ground. If you're not moving forward in God, you're moving backwards. Whoa, not everybody likes to hear that. It feels like you never get a day off. Well, if you want to give the strong man a day to attack you by letting your guard down, that's your right. I wouldn't. It's not a good plan. You know, you don't want any snakes to, sl to slip in through the cracks, do you? So we're going to keep our guard up. We're going to be moving higher. I'm moving forward. I'm not going back. I'm moving forward because the law of lift just keeps taking me higher. That's how I want to live my life. But it is sobering to know that I can't just cruise and miss out on those disciplines because gravity in the natural works on mass, okay? The greater the mass, the greater the pull of gravity. And I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to go crazy with all these analogies. And I do have scientists in the audience who will clearly call me out after the service. They'll do it in a kind way. But, like, you were way off on that one, Pastor, just so you know. You might want to repent. <laughs> but, like, for the sun is a bit much bigger mass than the earth. That has a greater pull of gravity. The earth is bigger than the moon. Earth has a bigger pull of gravity. If we were on the moon, we would be one-sixth of the weight we are here with the same mass. How many people want to go to the moon right now? See, I knew that would happen. <laughs> But you'd still have the same mass, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> but if you think of sin, it accumulates, doesn't it? It gets more and more mass inside of us when we didn't know the Lord. But even as a Christian, some of the big ones were taken out of the way. But the point is, this process of sanctification in the Lord's presence, it's not striving. We're not saying, oh, I, I'm going to work my way to a greater favor with God. No, it's the opposite of that. It's releasing all the baggage that's holding you down. Like a balloon, you know, those hot air balloons. You want to go higher, you get rid of baggage. <laughs> so you eliminate the things that are allowing sin to come into your life, and the mass reduces so gravity has less hold over you. And then the law of lift just takes in, it comes, takes over that situation, right? <laughs> Because the stronger your faith is, right? Now, don't you remember when Jesus said, I haven't found greater faith than this in all of Israel. And the lack of faith and the stronghold of unbelief was holding back the Jews from believing he is who they were praying. They wanted the Messiah to come. But because their mind, the mass of religion and religious thinking stopped them from the law of lift. And I really believe that. Part of Martha's problem with Mary being in the living room, remember, when uh, she was upset, Lord, tell her to come in the kitchen and help me, was that Mary didn't let religion stop her from knowing that God was in the living room, <laughs> okay? Like, this is what happens. God was right in their midst, and Martha was more hung up about the dishes. No, that can wait. I want to hear what God has to say in the living room. But it was also normally only for men to be taught from a rabbi. But Jesus said, oh no, women are welcome too. I better get a response on that one. Yeah, to say that Christianity is going to be open to every person. doesn't matter who you are, what your gender is, what your race is. This is for humanity. And Adam and Eve were for humanity. But when they sinned, it brought all this tension into the world and sin. So I want to live in that supernatural, not the natural 
gravity realm. I want to live in a supernatural realm in the law of lift. And, and the irony is this could really be 24-7, 365. Because every situation you're in, if you're dealing with people, especially, then you're dealing with somebody who's in the image of God. Like Trisha said earlier, the, 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 the pot has been stirred of a lot of anxiety in our culture. And there's a lot of really negative, nasty things being said. So if ever you were aware that every situation matters, the person you're speaking to is made in the image of God. Right? You might have to look really hard to find it, but it's in there. <laughs> but are you even asking the Lord? You should. Like, there's got to be a way, Lord, that you would have me to speak to this person that could still get the point across. I can love them without loving the sin. 